But uh, let's get back into it. Sort of blow the cobwebs off. So uh, what's the latest on draft? I haven't caught up. A uh, little, little bit of movement on pick swaps and... Uh, are the Eagles going to trade pick one? I feel like we've been asking that question for a long time. Yeah, I think we might have an answer as well. I oh, don't cool. Think, it doesn't think it's going to happen. Well, I, like, I don't think it, like, it's not news. It's just a, I just don't see it happening. And then, yeah, just not really anything happening on the pick swaps either. So they've opened the window. Um, I think it's been open for over a week now. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, not a single trade. So whether they'll keep this open again next year or maybe this is just a, a bit of an outlier year. Um, is one thing, but we couldn't still expect trades to come. Just more likely uh, on draft night over the over the two nights. Um, so why is that? Why would they do it? Why would they opt to trade picks on the night rather than? You so, know, so some clubs. Beforehand. So live trading, I think, is a, a good development just because you can have a club who is. It's probably got some later picks and then all of a sudden there's a guy who maybe has slid a few picks and they're like, all right, if, if we only have to get up a couple spots, maybe we can trade our, the, you know, our next pick and, and one of our future ones for a club for just one pick. And it's worked off a few times. Josh Weddle was a good one last year. Geelong did it a couple of years ago to get into the first round for Max Holmes. So um, certainly works live trading. This this window has been quieter and quieter as each year has gone on, on over the last, I think, three or four years. Um, like I said, it could certainly be active again next year's but if the afl change a few things then maybe they just think you know all the trades that need to be done can just be done ahead of the draft uh, and lodged then instead of over this 10-day period two weeks out from the drafts so that's that's some that's something but um yeah like i said there, there'll be probably a few live trades um and one of them definitely could be west coast so pick one i think will be used by the eagles and i think it'll use be by harley reed that seems like a pretty good chance i think um you know people have kind of mentioned maybe picks two and three is the only thing that can get it done and and if you're north melbourne don't think you're giving up two and three unless you're getting something else back in return along with pick one or if you know um there's some other movement uh elsewhere that that allows them to get some of their other trades uh, up the draft order but pick two and three uh, the history of that over the last 10 or so years of the two players that have gone two and three compared to the player that's gone one um the two and three is pretty much been the better almost every time um as good as harley reed is i think they'd like a, a dersmer and a mccurcher or a um curtain in, in those two selections so um yeah the way i see it is that west coast will probably hold pick one and, and north will stay at two and three yeah so those first three um look pretty set so um you've also said that the second half of the top 10 is set to shape the draft as well yeah so kind of i guess flowing on from from the West Coast discussion is they could also be a part of this if they want to trade back into the draft order, kind of like that live trading. Um, so Dan Kern's the name that, that's obviously popped up a fair bit for the Eagles, just given he's the best rated WA player. Um, and when you're a team pretty early in a rebuild, guys that are pretty versatile are, are you know, worth their weight in gold. So a player that can play as a key defender, as a forward target, or even through midfield would be great for West Coast, especially given, yes, um, you know, he's, he's from the area. Uh, so if they if he does slide past some of these um, you know, first six or so picks, then um, there's certainly a good chance that they could trade their, their future first. We'll touch on the spit later, I think. But um, yeah, there's certainly one that, that could move into this this gap. But I think when you hit about pick six, pick seven, when you get to, I think it's Melbourne and, and GWS, Geelong, Essendon, these are four clubs that could be looking at the same types of player. So it's going to be really interesting to see, A, who's left over from uh, after the first six or so picks. Because I think there's that probably first six group and then maybe it, goes down only slightly but to that to the next group shortly after that so um, when you look at Melbourne they're probably just going to be looking at who might be left over could be Riley Sanders Nick Watson could slide if the dogs don't take him but I don't know if the D's would take a small forward uh, and then you Connor O'Sullivan's um, Dan Curtin's in that bracket like I said if he slides as well uh, and Nate Caddy so between you know Melbourne Gita West Geelong and Essendon I think a lot of those guys are going to be looking at the same those same players uh, O'Sullivan, key defender, um, you know, as mentioned, Dan Curtin can, can similarly be the same and would likely be taken ahead of him. Uh, Eston would love a key defender. Geelong would love a key defender. So there's O'Sullivan for kind of a few clubs. Melbourne too could look to kind of prepare for life after Harrison Petty if they kind of are understanding that he'll be gone in a year or two. Mm. Um, and then Nate Caddy as well. GWS would love, I think, a key forward to match with Aaron Cadman in, in that kind of youth group for them. Uh, Geelong would love a key forward. You know, Tom Hawkins probably in his last year next year. Uh, Essendon would love a key forward. So so for, for Caddy, for O'Sullivan, uh, and then guys like Caleb Windsor and Darcy Wilson, a couple of outside midfielders, they're just in that probably 6 to 12 group. And then um, that's going to be a really interesting kind of 
four or five selections before you hit um, Adelaide and St Kilda and I think Sydney have a pick and Melbourne come back in as well. Um, and there's going to be probably a really good uh, player out of that group that, that's left over for one of those clubs. And um, yeah, Adelaide will be waiting to see who, who that is or they could you know go for a James Leak um, who seems to be coming up the ranks a little bit among some discussions. So yeah, that, that's going to be a really interesting part of the draft to look at, I think, on the night. Yeah. And obviously, um, you know, it's we've talked a lot about it, but the Academy and the father-son bids. So when are they expected to come? Yeah, so in the top 10, I, I think Jed Walter goes second. So after Harley Reid's picked up by West Coast, I think North kind of just, you've got the next two picks, you may as well use your top one to force um, Gold Coast's hand a little bit more. Uh, so I think Jed Walter goes too. He's probably the second best player in the draft anyway. So if yep. you're just kind of going off the top of their list, he'd be there. Uh, Ethan Reid and Jake Rogers are the next two. Um, Reid probably top 10. Rogers maybe, I don't think it'd be top 10, but it, he could be, uh, but maybe closer to that 10 to in that 10 to 15 range. And then Will Graham's the other one who, you know, after pick 15, 16, 17, it's going to open up a fair bit and it's going to be a pretty level playing field. So if there's a club that does like Will Graham or just wants to kind of be a bit of a nuisance and force Gold Coast into coughing up more points, then um, Graham could even earn a selection earlier than, than thought. Uh, I think similar could also be, you know, a set of uh, Caden Cleary at the Swan, so another academy, Northern Academy kid. Um, certainly, yeah, another one that might just be of interest or, or a, a club that I think like Sydney last year, like to just bid on a few players and force a few clubs to, to kind of cop up picks earlier than they thought they would. I think they did that with Harry Rouston, Max Michelani, and then ended up trading out of the first round last year, Sydney. So, um, yeah, a few en- they picked up a few enemies last year, but I guess it's all just part of the draft. Um, and then... Hawthorne and uh, Western Bulldogs might have some early father sons, Will McCabe and Jordan Croft, respectively. So I think Croft probably ahead of McCabe. I'll, I'll I rate McCabe quite highly, so I might have those two on the same level, but yeah, maybe in that pick fifteen range to to twenty range for those two. Um, and then the Hawks have another father son in Cole Shadir, who they could pick up pretty late into the draft, um, or you know after the draft anyway. Uh, and same with Kynan and Brown in Melbourne, so another father son for the D's who. Yeah, again, could just be reserved with a pretty late pick in the proceedings. Um, and then, yeah, the NGA kids. So obviously you need to be outside of pick 40 to to fetch a bid or match a bid for, for these kids. So Norman Luol, um for the Western Bulldogs. You got Mitch Edwards for Frio, uh, Toe Jath for Hawthorne. You'd think all three might be done by 40. But as mentioned, like after, you know, once you pass the maybe pick 17, pick 18, it's pretty level uh, and you know some of these guys could one of these guys could slide and that'd be great for either um yeah hawthorne the doggies or, or Fremantle. and there's a few others involved lance collard's another one but don't think he'll be um sliding anywhere outside the first round riley sanders is another but again probably taking the top 10 so those are the three names that are kind of the ones to watch i think when it comes to that pick 40 mark yep is this the draft of the most? Because this is the most I've like in recent memory of hearing about um, you know Academy and NGA and father son bids. Is there more than usual there's, this year? I feel um, like there's there's, a, there's there's probably a few. Years. I think it's just like the quality of them. Like mm-hmm. you you probably get a lot picked up later in the draft. Like father son, you might usually get three to four to five. Um, and Academy kids might be a little bit more. Obviously, like a couple of years ago when you only had the top 20 picks or even before that it was you know no barrier whatsoever and Jamara went number one for the Western Bulldogs there might have been a few more as well then with with no barrier but um yeah there's this is you know I think it was um you know a few last year that went early in the draft that got picked up by other clubs um Cam McKenzie being one as an NGA kid um yeah there's, there's a few this year I think it's just the quality as well especially with Gold Coast's mm-hmm. you know three to four kids um couple of father sons thrown in there and then yeah, the NGA is just getting bigger and bigger like clubs yeah. are just doing a lot more due diligence and get trying to get on top of these kids and it's kind of that balancing act of making sure that they're really good and re- ready for AFL footy but also making sure they're not top 40 prospects you can actually still hold on to them so there's a yeah there's that balancing act as well um but yeah there's 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 a few this year and it's a really good crop well in terms of those academies you can probably just expect there to be more and more in the coming years as that mm. academy itself develops yeah um but you have a mock draft coming up yeah second next. edition so uh we put i think it was a couple of weeks ago we mm-hmm. put out our first edition mock draft it's about 27 picks that's just the first round so obviously the 
after starting with 18 selections, you get your compensation picks added and then, you know, you can kind of expect those academy bids and father-son bids. So that was 27 selections. So you can look at that on zerohanger.com and then on Monday coming, we'll cover it as well um, as part of ZHTV, but it'll be on online um, over the weekend. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you'll be able to look at our uh, next mock draft, our second edition. So it's not necessarily... Uh, so I think this one's looking at 28 picks. So we've got an, another bid in there somewhere in the first round. Um, and it's just kind of looking at maybe, a, you know, a couple of changes here and there and the ripple effects that that will have. So, you know, if North Melbourne go for a curtain instead of a McCurcher, you know, who picks up McCurcher and then how does that change their plans? And then it's kind of a domino and snowball and, you know, use whatever other term you want. And then that'll kind of, you know, shift the, the plans for a few clubs. Some guys still go to the same pick or go to the same club. But um, yeah, new mock draft coming up this weekend and, and we'll kind of run through it on Monday for those that kind of want to listen or watch uh, a bit more depth yep. um, on how it's all broken down and, and why those clubs would probably pick those players. Yep. Awesome. All right. Keep an eye out for the mock draft second edition on zerohanger.com. 